Radioactive sources are needless to say very dangerous in the wrong hands. It seems that lost source incidents are far more regular than you would like. After its dissolution, the countries that formed part of the former USSR were forced to maintain, protect and dispose of radioactive sources. An industry that was centrally controlled by an established government infrastructure was almost overnight dissolved, resulting in highly dangerous materials falling to the responsibility of new fledgling governments, dealing with the complex aftermath of communism. The change in the economies of such countries resulted in financial hardship, where government support was once there, no longer existed, leaving people to try and carve out a living via any method possible, and one such way was through scrap metal. A waste repository in Tamiku, Estonia, became a prime target of free opportunistic scrap thieves. This is due to the relatively isolated and unguarded state of the site, but this would be a very grave mistake. Today we're looking at the radiological accident in Tamaku, and as such I'm going to rate this incident here 5 on my patented plane default disaster scale, and here 3 on the legacy scale. In September 1991 the Estonian parliament declared independence from the USSR. After this was recognised by Moscow, the parliament approved a new constitution and was headed by a president. As part of this, much of the support from the USSR began to be cut off, and new departments in the country were set up to handle various elements of governance, and this included the management and disposal of nuclear waste. Estonia was neither a nuclear energy user or even a research reactor operator but the need for nuclear waste disposal was still present from uses relating to research, industrial and medicinal. In 1963, the Tamaku facility was set up 12 kilometres south of Tallinn, which is around here on a map. The site was intended for management of low and intermediate level reactive wastes. The facility became the central storage disposal area for Estonia's nuclear industry, much of the site's design came from the criteria developed in Moscow in the 1950s. The Tamaku site was situated in a remote forested area. It was surrounded by an outer barbed wire fence at a 500 metre radial distance with a gate and guardhouse, and an inner fence around a liquid waste storage tank and solid waste storage vaults. The main disposal facility consisted of a 15 by 5 by 3 metres, providing disposal capacity for solid radioactive waste. For storage of liquid waste, there is an underground cylindrical concrete tank with a stainless steel lining. Both are buried underground and are accessible via a locked roof cover. The site was updated in the 1980s, but the project was only partially completed due to lack of resources. None of the waste stored at Tamaku was planned to be treated, and after around 30 years of use, 1,028 batches of waste had been disposed of at the facility, totalling approximately 97 tonnes, with a total activity of 200 terabecules. The prominent radionuclides were strontium-90 and cesium-137. By the early 90s, the activity of the site had reduced to 76 terabecules. The facility was also around the same time looking a bit worse for wear and no round-the-clock security personnel. Much of the timeline for this video is based off of the IAEA report into the event, and as always the link is in the description if you fancy further reading. This brings us on to the 21st of October 1994, and three brothers breaking into the Tamaku facility. In order to gain access, they climbed the fences, broke into the repository, and climbed down into the pit, in doing so bypassing the electric alarm system. The three men cut off the padlock to one of the storage areas, pulled open the steel door and one of the brothers stepped inside. Once inside the underground vault, the brother found a metal container and passed it up to his siblings. While he was doing this, a metal cylinder 18cm long and 1.5cm in diameter fell out of the open tube of the container. This was thrown back inside the storage area. A shorter cylinder with the same diameter had also come out of the metal container, but instead of throwing it back, 
one of the brothers placed the strange item inside his coat pocket. The three also broke into the liquid waste storage area where they stole some aluminium drums. The hazardous contents were emptied onto the ground, the drums and the metal container were then carried off site to be transported by car to a scrap metal dealer in Tallinn. During removal of the drums, one fell against one of the brother's legs, the same one who had pocketed the strange item, causing minor injury. En route, two of the men started to feel ill. The brother with his injured leg returned to his house in Kiza, where he lived with his stepson, the boy's mother and the boy's great-grandmother. Upon entering, he hung up his coat which had the stolen item in it. Later on in the day, it was moved into a drawer in the kitchen. Throughout the later part of the day, the man started to vomit and experience extreme nausea. On the 25th of October, the brother went to the local medical centre to seek out care for his injured leg. Obviously, he didn't mention how or where the accident happened and the doctors diagnosed him with a crush injury. However, within a week, on the 2nd of November, he would be dead with an official cause of kidney failure. But this was because the medical practitioners weren't aware of what or where the brother had been and taken home with him from the woods. The theft at the Tamaku storage facility wasn't discovered until the 8th of November when more waste was disposed of on site by operators. The workers noticed that the securing padlock to the waste vaults had been cut and replaced them. What was even more suspicious was that the dose rate on site had drastically decreased since the last disposal on site in September. The operators didn't think to report this or the damage to the locks to management. For days, the item taken from the site sat in the kitchen drawer, being close proximity to the inhabitants within, including the dead brother's stepson and the family dog. The next victim was said dog, who had been showing signs of acute radiation sickness, which was not a considered cause of illness of a family pet. The Canis familiaris passed away on the 16th of November. The stepson had discovered a strange item in the drawer after searching for tools to fix his bike and during this time he had touched the object. Finally, on the 17th of November 1994, the 13-year-old stepson was admitted to hospital with severe burns to his hands. These were diagnosed as radiation-induced and the police were notified. This worrying case of the burns sparked a region-wide search for a possible multiple orphan sources. Needless to say, the item stolen from Tamaku was a deadly radioactive isotope source. The police in turn notified the Estonian Rescue Board, which immediately sent staff to Kiza, who arrived at 23.30 on the 17th of November 1994. Initial dose rate surveys were undertaken of the household of the dead brother. Members of the Rescue Board briefly entered the house to try and locate the source. The measured dose rate of 1.2 grey per hour was recorded close to the surface of the drawer in the kitchen. The measured dose rates in other rooms were around 50 milligrays an hour. This resulted in all houses within a 200 meter range being evacuated, totaling 15 families. For the recovery efforts, staff wore lead aprons and thin rubber gloves, but did not have any proper handling tongs to place the source into a hastily obtained 3.5 centimeter thick lead walled shielded box. Two limited time entries were planned to identify and recover the source by recovery staff. During the first entry, lasting 2 minutes and 35 seconds, the drawer of the kitchen cupboard was emptied onto the floor, allowing operators to correctly identify the source. The dose rate was at 5 to 7 centimeters from the unshielded source, measured to be 1.5 to 1.8 grays an hour. The second entry, unsurprisingly, was to safely regain ownership of the source. This took 2 minutes and 15 seconds and necessitated carrying in the lead shield container and manipulating the source into it with the operator's hands. The contact exposure lasted 2 to 3 seconds. The dose rate close to the surface of the lead box was measured to be 100 milligray an hour. Once recovered, the source inside its new container was placed in the back of a van for the transportation back to the Tamaku repository. The recovery operation was completed by 2.30 p.m. on the 18th of November 1994. Neighbours were then permitted to return to their homes. The item that was thrown back by the brothers into the vault turned out to be a spacer. 
hinting that the item stolen for scrap was actually a source carrier of some sort. Strangely, it was uncertain at the time what radioactive element made up the lost source. As the recovery team lacked any portable gamma spectrometry equipment in Tallinn, making it very difficult to determine the precise nature of the radioactive source. It was most likely either cesium-137 or cobalt-60, but eventually it was discovered to be cesium-137, when a portable gamma spectrometer provided by the IAEA was used at the Tamaku facility in December 1994. The source was estimated to be between 150 gigabecules to 7.4 terabecules of radioactivity, clearly enough to prove to be fatal if exposed near for too long. Even more worrying was that in January 1995, a second unaccounted for source was discovered alongside the road between Tallinn and Narva. A Swedish led recovery team helped in safely returning this 1.7 terabecule source back to Tamaku. Due to the discovery of the sources, the death of the brother was re evaluated, and it was estimated that the 25 year old had received a dose of between 2,000 and 3,000 grays an hour. One of the other brothers later showed signs of burns on his hands from a possible handling of the source as well. After the incident, the surviving brothers were interviewed by the police and even though admitting to breaking into the Tamaku facility, were adamant that they did not know the risks posed by the materials kept on site, instead only wanting scrap metal. The lessons from the incident are pretty obvious and were easiest to take on for the Estonian authorities. And this included more robust reporting of suspicious activity and more importantly, 24 hour guarding of dangerous material sites. Plus, it seems a rather inefficient way to dispose such materials. And the IAEA set out better guidance for Estonia moving forward, which included better grading of high and low level waste as to make use of the limited storage facilities more effectively. The response to the discovery of a patient with ARS was quick. However, the team were ill-equipped for the situation, necessitating manual handling of the deadly radioactive source, which is a crazy way to deal with such an item. It's crazy to think that such a dangerous item could have been so easily stolen. But sadly, in a country that had only recently gained its independence, some things would take higher priority than others to sort out. And it seemed nuclear waste was not the most important thing to manage for the fledgling government and the radiological accident in Tamaku was the result. Thank you for watching. This video is a plain difficult production. All videos are produced by me, John, in a sunny southeastern corner of London, UK. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike licensed. If you'd like to support the channel financially, you can on YouTube membership and Patreon. And also, if you fancy, you can check out my Twitter page for all sorts of hints and photographs to do with future videos. And all that's left to say is thank you for watching. <laughs>